that's not bad enough, how about this? Every year, nearly 50,000 women here in the U.S. suffer near-fatal complications during childbirth. I mean, here in 2019. And about 700 women actually die. So according to the CDC, the maternal mortality rate in America is 18 deaths for every 100,000 births. So that's nearly double the rate from 30 years ago. Uh, the shocking statistic makes the U.S. one of the most dangerous countries to give birth in among developed nations. And you think, uh, why is it getting worse now with mm -hmm. all the medical technology we have? So Arizona well, State on? Senator Kate Brophy McGee joins us now. Thank you for being here, Senator. Yeah, good good seeing to see you. you. Good to be here. Thank so you. So you have a bill that was just passed, right? Congratulations. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to try to tackle this. W what is the issue and why did you bring this bill up? Well, there are a couple of issues. So first of all is the lack of good data, and the second is, assuming we can gather the data, what are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. This issue was brought to me by a constituent. It's an absolutely heartbreaking story. Leticia and Vince Garcia's daughter gave birth at the age of 23 to her third child. Healthy baby, healthy mom, no complications. Wasn't feeling too well. Went home, went back to the hospital, and slipped into a coma and died wow. of an undiagnosed uterine tear. And it happened during childbirth. Happened during childbirth and it wasn't caught. And now these three babies and their dad are left to grow up with no mom and no wife. So it was an absolutely heartbreaking story. And my constituent, Leticia, did something about it. Yeah. Um, she called March of Dimes, she called her state senator, she called the governor's office and said, what can we do? Because the more she researched, she realized these fatalities, these injuries are preventable. It can be, you can stop this from happening in a high, high percentage of the cases. So in beginning to look at the issue, how will you plan to generate the information, the research, the numbers to really figure out what's going on? Well, that's the first problem is the lack of data. Our data is 2015, we need to bring it up to date. Yeah. Uh, it accounts for maternal mortality, mm -hmm. which is the death of the mother. doesn't account for maternal morbidity. If you think about Serena Williams, who had a right. pulmonary yeah, embolism and did, almost yeah. died. So there are injuries that occur. So we added that part into statute. We created a commission that will collect the data, analyze the data, and the most important thing, do something with the data. Make recommendations, uh, do follow-up procedures, and there may be some things that we need to codify in statute, but every member of the healthcare community, the hospitals, the OBGYNs, the nurse, everybody's on board with doing this, and they are all represented on that commission. And I know it's really early to uh, draw any conclusions because mm -hmm. you haven't even brought your, your data together, but what do they think is going on here? Why is this getting worse over the last 30 years instead of getting better with all the medical technology we have? Well, I have my own theories. <laughs> As a mom mm -hmm. of three kids, you know, yeah. mom's tired, mom's focused on kids and families, mom's not thinking about herself maybe enough. But I think what we need to do is gather the data, really dig into it and see where we missed. Um, because right now the data isn't, isn't usable. And so just simply gathering it and issuing a report doesn't get the job done. It's gonna take a deep dive. And the people that are on the commission that my bill created are exactly the people we need to be looking at this. They are doctors, they are nurses, they are hospital providers, they are healthcare providers. They all know what to look for and how it should be reported. And I think you bring up a really good point that all moms, like we just need to take care of ourselves first or else the family won't be taken care of. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And, and you're also dealing with kind of a matrix. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the mom isn't healthy, but the pregnancy is. Or maybe the mom and the pregnancy neither are healthy. So you, so you have to surround them with the type of care in advance you know, or as they go through their pregnancy. The governor's budget has some really interesting initiatives in it regarding pregnant moms in terms of getting that type of care to rural Arizona where it's hard to get mm -hmm. yeah. and providing that type of assistance to moms so that these can be healthy pregnancies and happy births. Right. Aww. Well, thank you so much for all you oh, do for you. Our, all those mothers out there across thank our great you. state. Yeah. Congratulations on getting this passed. I yeah. mean, uh, thank this you is, so much. You know, you guys have done a really good job this year with a couple of different bills. Uh, you know, the opioid, uh, putting all that information together. Good, bipartisan, mm -hmm. common sense yeah. things that are going to help people in Arizona. So nice job with that. Thank you. I'd be remiss if I didn't say that the law has a name. Ariana's Law. Ariana's Law. Yes. And the saying is, ask and ask again.
for Ariana. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Nice thank talking you so with you much. today. Yeah.